Okay. Okay, Lucerne Valley Johnson County Valley Municipal Advisory Council is now in session at uh, 506. If you'll stand and join me in the flag salute. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. So uh, he said he was. Okay, roll call. Um, looks like everyone is here except uh, Marie. And uh, Linda just informed me that uh, your microphone's not working. That's me. One, two, three. Check. One, two, three. No. I hear it over here. Check. One, two, three. It's working. It's just not very loud. Amplified. Very different mic. You got it. It's just not very loud. Testing one, two, three, one. One, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Five, four, three, two, one. All righty. We're in business. Okay, roll call. Uh, everyone is here except for Marie uh, Brashear. She's, uh, uh, Linda just informed me she's in the hospital. that had serious problems, so uh, keep her in your prayers and uh, for good recovery. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion has been made. Second. Seconded by Linda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, I'm hoping you all had a chance to read the minutes. Uh, we don't have a copy of the minutes with us tonight. At least I didn't get a copy. Um, so looking for approval for uh, last month's uh, minutes. You can do this one night, Lorraine. Um, I make a motion when you accept the minutes. Okay. Yeah, the motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion on that? No. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, uh, I have a special announcement to make here. I want to let the audience know that uh, uh, Supervisor Ramos uh, did beat out his oppo opponent and got elected to the uh, assemblyman for the 40th district on the other side of the hill there. And so whenever a supervisor vacates his seat, that uh, close, he, all his staff is gone, um, and the MAC boards, are, all his MAC boards are closed down. So this will be our last MAC, more, MAC meeting un, until it's such time, <laughs> knock it off, until it's such time, <clears throat> either the interim supervisor or the, whenever the next elected supervisor comes on board, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there, um, we won't have any more MAC, MAC meetings, so. Um, so, Sergeant and Captain, you guys take note of that. This will be our last MAC meeting until a new supervisor comes on board and, and reestablishes it. So, you'll be free to go on Thursday nights. It's my last MAC meeting anyway. Oh. Sergeant Siebert's coming back in January. Oh, really? Who is? I didn't hear what he said. Uh, Lonnie's coming oh, back. Oh, he is? Yeah. Oh, okay. We, a promise kept? Yeah. 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 Well, we'd be able to find out. I, I have a question. How did you you want to use your uh, microphone? So How long is the term? <laughs> How long? How long is the rest of Ramos's term? I have no idea. Two years. I'm you guessing probably two more years. Two more years. Yeah. yeah. So. That's a long time. Yeah, but uh, there'll be an interim guy, so we'll see what he wants to do or she, whatever. Okay. Okay, so um, our next item is our guest speakers. And I was pretty happy when I heard about this group, uh, uh, the Lucerne Valley Sports League. They're working on, I believe, on their 50C3. Um, they want to bring sports for youth back into Lucerne Valley. Yeah. So we're really, really happy about that. And so at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, David and Colleen uh, uh, Burlow. If you would take the podium there, tell us what you got going on.
Hi, my name is David. My wife, Colleen, is right there. And my two boys, Hayden and Gannon, and our youngest baby, Cambria. We moved here last year from Missouri in October. And we saw that there was a need for a sports or athletics team here in the city of Lucerne, especially for our youth, because it's not really too much for our youth to be involved in anything. Um, so we decided to bring about, you know, on ourselves what it took to become a, I guess, a manager for a, a sports team. We found out that we need to become a, a nonprofit organization, which we're in the process of doing now um, through the state of California, the Secretary of State of California, and. Um, we're just waiting on paperwork to get filled out, and then we have our ITIN number for our nonprofit account um, to start our bank account with to receive funds from our sponsors. Um, we've ran a fundraiser here, and we still have the money in an envelope. It's just we can't. Oh, that's an, the, the SMAF, I believe. Um, it's uh, we're waiting for our funds to be like it's basically opening up our bank account. That's what we're waiting on. Yeah, we can't use the football or the field without insurance or anything like that. And we can't do that unless we have a bank account. We can't set a bank account unless we're a nonprofit organization. We can't do that until we had our ITIN number, which we finally got. So now we're becoming a nonprofit organization through the state of California to get the bank account to get the insurance. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much where we're at on getting the sports team started. It's called Lucerne Valley Cougars. There's a Facebook page. You're more welcome to visit the page. It's the only page on Facebook that's called Lucerne Valley Cougar, so it's pretty easy to find. And if you have any questions, you could always feel free to message us, call us, or text us. Our phone number's on there. And uh, again, thank you, Lucerne Valley, for letting us come out and speak. We appreciate it. Okay. okay. Well, hold on. Before you, get, before you sit down, uh, what sports do you plan on bringing into town? We are starting with baseball first, and we currently have, I don't know why I didn't go over this, but we have 54 youth who are, have signed up and interested. Um, wow. it's a, we have another 11 adults or so who are interested, but we're working on getting background checks and stuff for them before they start volunteering and helping out with the youth. Um, first, we're starting with baseball. We're seeing what the turnout is like with that. It's too cold right now, so we're going to wait for the next season to come around. If the turnout's good for baseball, then we're going to go around and do foot, like flag football. Uh, no contact or anybody really getting hurt in that sport. And then if that is a turnout, then we'll keep doing like other things like soccer and I don't know, volleyball. It really depends on the youth and what they want to do with it. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, we're good. I think that's something that is really missed in this town. We used to have pretty big little league here. Yeah, there was the little league. It stretched out here to District 49, and uh, they took it away because the need was no longer there. There was no longer enough youth to fill a full football or baseball team so they took away the little leagues yes and a reliable coaching team basically yeah. what uh, well, go ahead and ask no you <laughs> you need to practice for Playing straight up what age group are you looking at okay so on the forums you can find these through the facebook page it's starting from age four and I'm taking to age of 16. Oh, no, no, it'll be spread out through different teams, divided into the age groups, which are on the Facebook page as well, three to seven, uh, eight to nine, I believe, or eight to 10, and then 11 to 13, I think it was 14 to 16, and I wasn't gonna go any higher, or I was not gonna accept any youth higher than 16 years of age, I just didn't see the need for it, unless they're adults and they're volunteering for coaching or anything like that. Oh uh, yeah, for the so how you start baseball usually the four year olds if yeah. they don't have any baseball experience they start with T ball. Right. When I taught it, we just started at the four year old. Yeah, plastic balls or uh, not plastic balls and bats, and if they're used to swinging a bat already with a year's experience, we'll be using like tennis balls and stuff like that for the younger kids. We have um, four year olds, the seven year olds, and we have the little team. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah T ball. Yeah, that's what we plan on doing too. Yes. Microphone. Is it on? Is it on? Yes. Have you had the opportunity to go to the school and talk to the coaches over there? Um, so not the high school over here, no. I didn't really know what direction was going with all the paperwork and stuff. I didn't really want to get too many people involved if I didn't know 
how it was going to pan out. I'm still understanding the process of what it takes to become a nonprofit organization. Um, so I haven't reached out that far, but I've reached out as far as the elementary school as in regards to letting the youth and the teachers and stuff know there that, hey, this is what I'm doing. I've given out flyers. I've passed out flyers here in town at the market. and I've left my um, flyers around town. I've gone and asked for sponsorships. So I know that um, companies are interested here, but I haven't reached out for coaching in that way now. It would be good for you to introduce yourself because yes, they can help you. Castillo's phone number from. He's the honorary mayor, but he's very involved with the love sports teams, and I think he's coaching over there right now. Yes, so that, that's always a good start. I definitely feel like if, if he's an honorary member or honorary mayor. Honorary mayor. Yes. Yes. He's the guy. So it's a good start, and I definitely would take that into consideration, reaching out to the high school and letting them know how they coach their kids and what they do. Hey, Donna. No, no, what you're saying is that the, the uh, chamber is going to back him? No, uh, the honorary mayor, Philip Castillo, I gave him Philip's number. He's very involved in sports for years. Um, he just collected sports equipment for kids of all ages. Yeah, basically, if there's anybody who knows any information of, you know, because this is my first time ever doing this, this is my first time ever really even speaking like this about any organiza organizations that I personally ran, and uh, this is, I, I'm, I'm very new to it. So I don't really know, you know, I'm understanding it pretty basically because I'm new to it, so, yes, yes, Linda. Well, two questions, one is, um, why, or have you looked into how many kids really are in this town available for sports, because that was the problem before, and I haven't seen the school population, it's done nothing but go downhill until the last couple of years, and it's sort of flattened out, and increased a little bit, but we're still at the low end of school population. And then my other question is, can you just give us a little bit more about your background and why, how you ended up in Lucerne Valley of all places from Missouri and what, just what's your background and what are you doing? Okay, so my, to answer your first question, um, basically, let me start with your second question, I guess. So we moved here from Missouri. I was born in San Bernardino County, and my dad was a truck driver. He traveled around the whole country. So we moved a lot, ended up in Missouri. Um, uh, they moved back here, and I moved out when I was still in Missouri. And I decided to go to college, which I'm still attending college through my bachelor's in science. And I moved out here because all my family is out here, and it's very lonesome, far away. Um, the first question, to answer your first question, so we um, we have forms filled out that each child fills out which um, to let us know about the need here in the town. To become a part of the Little League, District 49, we have to have at least 60 signatures from youth here in town to even become a Little League. We have no intentions of becoming a Little League. We have intentions of just coaching basically whoever is available to come to town, whether it's five kids or 30 or 40 kids. We just want us to reach out. Um, my background in sports is um, I pretty much played all the way up until the end of high school and then with all the moving and stuff I stopped playing sports and I decided to focus more on getting a job and starting college and we had children at a fairly young age so it was a matter of working on that so I can play sports even more. I know I've learned a lot of things playing sports, guidance, leadership, um, uh, filling certain roles when they need to be filled. I definitely see there's an importance for children, especially at a young age, to learn those key concepts in life. And that's why we did. I see a lot of kids around here, good and bad. It's not like a, a bad area to live in. I love, I love Lucerne. I, the, the, the people speak for themselves. I, I think it's a really great positive place, a small community that really comes together like this. And uh, I just want to see the most come from wherever I'm at. I, I want to reach in to my community and if I can make a change at all then, or if we can, I can do that. I want to show my kids that this is a possibility just by reaching out and attending these meetings. I feel that if you're from Missouri, you got to be pretty good. That's where I'm from. <laughs> I, was born, I was born in Fontana, San Bernardino County. It's a show me state, so. You're not kidding, it is. 
Does the audience have any questions anymore? Sports. I used to do T-ball. Okay. So I was in that for quite a few years until my husband was in that horrible accident, and then I was kind of quit. So. Well, thank you for volunteering again. Also, uh, <laughs> okay. So thank, you, thank you, Robin, for volunteering again. If there's any interested <laughs> members who would like to fill out an application for a volunteer, you can go on our website and you can fill one out, and we can take a good step. Well, it sounded like. Snack bar for you. What was that? I'll run the snack bar for you. If you would like to. Yeah. We plan on keeping this local. We don't know what it's going to take to reach out to play Big Bear or Apple Valley or any other high desert. We want to keep it to where our kids are. Play each other. Yeah, and it's a community team, basically. And we were doing this mostly off of, off of the sponsorships and things like that. So, I'm yeah. glad you're waiting until after. It's cold? cold. Yeah, it's cold. David, thank you guys so much for coming and, yeah, and clearing us up, yeah. uh, filling us in on what you have going. And I wish you all the best. Okay, I have any questions. Okay, this is the public comment portion of our meeting. At this time, anyone may comment on items not on the agenda that are of interest to the public and within the jurisdiction of the MAC. The MAC is prohibited by law from taking actions on matters not on the agenda. Comment may be offered on items on the agenda when these items come up for discussion or action. A limit of three comments per item and three minutes per comment may be imposed, which we won't do. In all cases, if you wish to speak, now we don't do the registration card either. And so, um, so at this time, is there anyone who would like to, uh, to um, address the MAC board? Uh, I don't want to have to go back to Ramos and talk to him. I'd like to find out through somebody else how we can get you guys back on the board and an address or a number to call. Okay. Actually, you did. I forgot. Uh, Bill, would you be so kind as to grab one of these mics and pass it around? Sure. To, you're, you're pretty well versed on doing that, so. <laughs> Thank you. He's a professional mic passer. All right, to answer your question, you can't do anything at this time. Not until an interim uh, supervisor is appointed by the board. So we're just in limbo until the board appoints somebody, and then un that, until such time as that interim supervisor chooses to create a MAC board. They're under no obligation to have a MAC board. So, and to be honest with you, I think all the MAC members here feel the same way. We kind of need a break for a little while. So. We have not, we've only, the only battle I know of that we've won, at least since I've been chairman, is uh, getting the park. Um, and that was really, that was really Richard Selby's, uh, he's the one that really did that. But other, we've not won any battle on any solar, anything on the community plan, nothing. They're, they're not listening to us in San Bernardino. So it's kind of disheartening and it kind of wears you out. You know, thank God for people like Bill and, and uh, Chuck Bell and stuff that are, uh, you know, they haven't dropped the ball, they're, uh, fighting like crazy to keep our town the way it is so Amen. Um, is there any other comments for the board bill you don't have to go up there do you, do you uh, want me to do this now or in a little later just to update you on where we're at with that renewable energy fight I wish you'd have called me I'd have put you on the agenda okay um, but this would be, yeah, go ahead, take a few minutes. Not, you're not going to drag it out very long, though, right? No. Okay. Why don't I do it up there? Yeah, that would be better. <laughs> we can drag him away if he does. Uh, we did get screwed by the Board of Supervisors. Just in a nutshell, uh, about 75 people went down to the meeting. Uh, they were half hour late starting. And then an hour into it after that, uh, the chairman of the board said, you know, we really owe it to the people who came all the way from the desert to face the fact that their supervisor didn't show. 
and it would be wrong for us to deal with this subject in the absence of their supervisor. So they decided we should all go home and they'd reschedule it. That didn't sit well with us, surprisingly enough. Anyway, then we've in the meantime got a hold of what the land use service people are going to recommend to the supervisors when and if we ever do have this meeting. And they've gutted our policy 4.10, uh, the one that says none of these projects in our rural communities. And the way they've gutted it, they've said, if you supervisors vote on this original policy 4.10, which protects the desert communities, land use services recommends that um, if a developer wants to put their development in to a rural community, they can still ask for an amendment so that it can put theirs in. So we would end up fighting every project just like we have been anyway. So we have homework to do. And I don't know where it's going, but everyone will get informed. If you don't get Chuck Bell's emails or my emails and you want to know where we're at, as soon as we know, just give me your email address and I'll add it to that list. Any questions for Bill while he's up there? Yep. If we could get the people to talk to one of our representatives and get things going, will it help? Well, we first, we basically have to wait till there's a replacement for Ramos, we think. But that may happen by the, about the 10th of, or 13th of December. So, Anyway, in the meantime, we're brainstorming, but keep your thoughts coming, and maybe one of them will be one of the things that works. It's not looking real bright at the moment. Our loser Valley just kind of lost out again. Yeah, it's like Roger was saying, we haven't won very much stuff. did find out what happened with all the uh, trash trucks that were coming in. Uh, oh, you might know well that doesn't... I know we, we stopped it, but we only, I heard we only temporarily stopped it. Is that... I, I don't know. As far as I know, the, I, I don't know about if the trucks have stopped. They're, do you mean you're talking about the ones bringing the mulch and the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really know where that's at. I know... Um, the appropriate county agencies are we're working hard on it, and so. But the wheels of government turn pretty slow, so we'll just have to see. Um, so I, I don't have a good answer for you. I'm sorry. Is there any other questions for the for the Mac? Okay, no other public comments. Then we'll go ahead and move on. Um, San Bernardino County Sheriff, Sarge, you're up. It's working pretty good tonight, isn't it? Good evening, everybody. Uh, unfortunately, this is my last meeting. Uh, Sergeant Lonnie Siepert is coming back in January. So if you guys resume meetings, he'll be here to attend and give you the report. I'm going to give you, uh, since I wasn't here on the last meeting, I'm going to give you a report for September and October, and then I'll give you the yearly stats up to the end of October. So what we have for September, from September 1st to September 30th, in the county area of Apple Valley, we had 481 calls for service with 35 reports taken. In the Lucerne Valley area, we had 542 calls for service and 47 reports taken here. For the month of October, from the 1st to the 31st, 
uh, Apple Valley County area, we had 448 calls for service and 36 reports taken. And Lucerne Valley area, 554 calls for service with 53 reports taken. And the yearly stats up until the end of October, so it goes from January 1st through October 31st, the Apple Valley County area, we had 4,583 calls for service and 417 reports taken. And Lucerne Valley area, 5,563 calls for service and 528 reports taken. So just in that first 10 months, we've had over 10,000 calls for service with the two to three deputies patrolling those two areas. So they've been really, really busy. Um, if you've been by the, the station, we've completed construction. So all our plumbing is working again. And uh, on top of that, we got a whole new parking lot, which was great. So the building looks brand new with the new parking lot. Um, coming up in December, we're going to have an open house. So we're going to have a, a lot of our volunteers there, some deputies there. We'll have off-road team, search and rescue, or posse members with their horses. Um, we're going to be doing a uh, Christmas gift giveaway for kids. So uh, we should be pretty busy. I don't have the exact time on the 22nd, uh, but we will we'll be putting out a press release giving the exact times we're going to start and when it'll end. So as weather permits, hopefully uh, we'll be able to, to have a nice out outing there. All right, that's it. Any questions? Well, when you say calls for service, uh, the ratio between written reports and calls for service is is substantial. So I'm just curious. What kind of calls for service generally I don't, would not require a report? Um, calls for service that don't require reports are like 911 calls, um, audible alarms, um, sometimes the traffic collisions we respond to the, in the county areas, that's a CHP responsibility, so they take the report and we usually assist on stuff like that. Welfare checks, things like that, it's just stuff that we get called to constantly that we don't have to take a report on. But when you say a report, that's a report that's going like, to go to the, the district attorney then? Is that either, either goes to the district attorney or to document a crime occurring. Sometimes we don't have enough evidence to follow up on. We don't have witnesses or anything that we can follow up on, so we, we have to document it in a report. Wondered about that. Thank you. Is there any questions from the audience? Right there. Do you see us getting any new sheriffs in the new year? We're down like five, are we, or not that many? No, we, we've... Uh, got our staffing back up. We're not fully staffed yet. Um, one of our deputies is out uh, on a medical condition and we're not sure when he's coming back. And another one has been assigned to the gang team temporarily, uh, but he'll be back uh, the 1st of December. Um, so we'll, then we'll be back up to five. We're, we usually run eight deputies out here at the Lucerne station, but when we're, we're lacking here, we pick up extra bodies from the Victor Valley station. So they come out and help support this area. So we always have, usually try to keep two that help out in this area on every ship. So, yes, ma'am. Um, we, uh, we do, uh, people pay their bills at the store and some customers come up and they have an electric bill and it's like $1,500 and they come out with this big old wad of money and plunk it on the counter. How is it legal for them to be doing growing out there? What, what conditions do they have to meet, or how is it? Anywhere in the county area, it's illegal. You can't get a permit to grow marijuana. You, you cannot get one. Just curious. <laughs> oh, that's good thinking. Wouldn't that send a flag up if there's a $1,500 electric bill at a residence? Isn't there an automatic flag? It is for Edison. Because they, it, it, we, we don't see the, their electric bill. Um, no, I know you don't. but. Would, would that trigger Edison to maybe yes. notify you guys? Or? Yeah, our, our marijuana team actually has an Edison employee that's their liaison. So anytime they see something out of the ordinary, they notify the marijuana team and then they start investigating to see what's going on there. Whether it, maybe it's a, you know, somebody's using a lot of power for other things like machinery, um, but most of the time it's, it's for growing marijuana. So well, we get notified. Had a catch on it, so that it said RX Farm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, they're they're numerous in this area. So, so uh, they're was that that's part of being an undocumented pharmacist. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to look yeah. into that. Is there anything else for the 
Sergeant. Sir, thank. Oh, I'm sorry. How's Robert Jones? He's doing fantastic. I was just talking back there about him. Uh, that's the reason I wasn't here last month. Uh, one of our deputies in Atlanta got shot at night. Um, but he, he was only in the hospital just under two weeks. Uh, he went home and he's recovering very well. I actually sat down with him yesterday and talked. And he's wanting to come back, but unfortunately he can't until he heals up and gets cleared by the doctor to come back. He, uh, he grew up here in the Cern Valley. Yes, sir. And, um, he was in my Sunday school class as a kid. He's a great guy. Um, he worked for the store for several years. Yep, yeah, great guy. <laughs> His ties to this community are strong. Yes. Yeah, he, was very, he told me how proud he was to, to live out here most of his life and work out here. And then he decided, him and his wife decided to move to Wrightwood. So they went from one extreme to the other. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Very, wait a minute. We've got more hands coming up. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I, Mike, where's Mike? I. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, where's Mike? Um, I have a question. It's kind of a touchy situation with the grower. It's kind of a touchy situation with the growers. They, I asked them, why are you growing so much? I thought it's illegal. And they say, I'm incorporated. What does that mean? Does that mean that they can grow more? Or am it, I it, it's just a made-up term they have. It, it doesn't mean anything to us. If they're growing illegally, they're growing illegally. Yeah, they can incorporate all they want. It doesn't mean they can grow out here in the county. Yeah. They're just wasting money getting incorporation. So. Yeah. Just wondering. I don't like illegal stuff. Me either. <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. And good luck on your next uh, assignment. All right, San Bernardino County Fire, come on up. Okay, hello everybody. For those that don't know me, I'm Captain Borowski from Station 8. Uh, this will be my last one. No, okay. <laughs> Get my notes here. Um, I'm presenting the activity report for October. I wasn't here last month. Uh, it'll be October 1st to the 30th. Uh, we had uh, a total of 93 incident responses out of Station 8. Uh, it still averages 75 to 80 medical and then the rest miscellaneous structures, TCs, uh, whatnot. Uh, we did have a um, good response at Trunk and Tree. Um, we had our duty crew there with PCFs, the fire explorers, and it was well received. And burn suspension is still in place. Um, we are issuing permits. They're good for a year. but you're not allowed to burn until they lift the uh, suspension. So that's still ongoing. <coughs> uh, the room addition is almost completed. Um, it's all framed up, sheared. Uh, we can't wait to move in. Uh, probably mid-December by the time it's done. And it's big, uh, we don't plan an open house. Maybe we should probably consider that to compete with our fellow public safety uh, organizations. Okay. Okay. We do have sandbags available. I brought some today. Anybody you know needs some, just go ahead and grab some. Um, and we do have some at the station. In the event that the weather does change, which we know it will at some point. Okay. Um, we, we're currently um, accepting donated toys for the Spark of Love toy drive at the fire station. Um, any donations would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we currently have two units out of our division on the. Um, fires in LA and Ventura County. It's been a rough week. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. If anybody has any questions, the council or anybody in the audience. What are you building back there? It's a room addition. Oh, okay, because I keep going to go back on Mondays. So I look at it and it's, every day is a different day. Yeah, it's pretty significant. It's, it, it basically, it's a lot, of, a lot of lumber for just two rooms, but it's, it's needed because we're, we're a little cramped. So two brand new rooms. Yes, sir. Burn permits. You kind of, kind of. You kind of burn through this uh, burn permits. Uh, why can't we get a burn permit? Why is okay, that? There, there's um, those that 
have lived in the valley, there's, there's two distinct boundaries in Lucerne for permitted, allowable burns. Cal Fire has everything on the south of the highway. County Fire has everything on the north of the highway. As a county fire agency, we respond no matter what to, to whatever call. But as far as issuing burn permits to burn tumbleweeds, branches, leaves, um, depends on where you live, it would determine who you um, go to to get issued a permit. County Fire is, is issuing burn permits. We've, we've always issued them. But the burn suspension is still in effect for obvious reasons because you know, it's still fire season. So that will be, the burn permit suspension will uh, be lifted once we get significant rain and the weather changes. So, but we're still issuing permits for the county side to whoever wants them. They're good for a year, but there's no cost. Cal Fire, you know, does it on the other end. So it depends on where you live. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, we, we do issue permits, but you just, we, we know the suspension's still in effect, so I just want to inform the public of that. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's all indicated on the permit, you know, just the steps you have to go through. All right. Um, no other questions, then? Thank you very much. All right, Roger. Thank you. Thanks for bringing the sandbag. Oh, yeah, good. And I'm not surprised Cal Fire's not here. I'm sure they're, it's all hands on deck for them. Oh, yeah, they're. Yeah. We've got to cover engineer up more. Yeah. Okay, Reese, uh, CSA 29 report. Reese Troublefield. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the MAC and members of the community. It's great to be here with you again tonight, as always. <clears throat> um, November marks my uh, 11th anniversary here in Lucerne Valley, and I'm proud to be here. And, and um, I've been happy to be part of the community in some small way. And I uh, um, look forward to continuing uh, trying to achieve the goals of the community and the park system um, uh, for uh, quite some time. I have a quick report tonight. Um, uh, we're making uh, continued improvements at Russell Park. We just got a $5,000 grant from the Mojave Water Agency to continue to do that. So you'll see some improvements going in out there. Uh, we had, uh, uh, as a result of the uh, December 2nd um, terrorist attack a couple years ago, almost a two-year anniversary now, um, a group called the Incredible Edible Community Garden uh, down in Rialto uh, contacted me and wanted to do a um, memorial type thing for um, members of all, all 14 victims. And one of those victims uh, named Mike Wetzel um, that worked for um, Health and Human Serv Services at the county um, was a resident of Lake Arrowhead. And he, and, and they wanted to do a, 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 because I managed the park in Lake Arrowhead, they wanted to do a memorial there with some about 30 trees uh, that we planted and, and a park improvement actually. And it went really well and uh, so they contacted me about two months ago and said, hey, we've got a bunch of trees here that we want to donate uh, to the, throughout San Bernardino County to what they're calling their, um, uh, may the forest be with you um, campaign. And uh, so we're, we got uh, 100 donated trees for Lucerne Valley. They'll be going in the parks in the next six months. Um, 100 trees is a lot, and it's going to make a difference and green up the existing parks we have. There's already a lot of trees here. But um, over at Midway and over at um, Russell, I'll be able to plant some more trees and, and throughout in, uh, Pioneer Park, too, as well. So um something that we're really proud of the the um, arrangement that we have with the incredible edible community garden and the folks that uh, continue to to push that effort um as always the parks and, and uh, cemetery are in really 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 good shape the staff does a great job here uh keeping your parks uh as some of the the best parks managed in uh, the county and everybody when they come here says that so um uh, congratulations to our staff for continuing to do that. Uh, we are having a lot of a lot of ball field rental activity. Um, 
unfortunately, a lot of it's from out of town, but at least the ball fields are being rented. And um, I really commend the folks that I think left uh, that we're talking about doing the youth sports programming. Um, there's a need here. Um, I think as Linda commented, um, when I came here in 2007, there were, I'm gonna, I don't know how many there were, 500 and something kids in the elementary school. I think it was 563, but maybe it was 516. But anyways, 500 and something. And the last time I, I checked here, there was a little over 300. So while 300 might be enough to, to have some youth sports leagues, it probably is, uh, it's not going to be as easy as it was when it was five something. And maybe even beyond that, it was six, seven, maybe back in the heyday, uh, it might have been. So um, I, I, I do commend them. When I came here in 2007, everybody told me, and I'm a youth sports guy, and that's what I, my passion is, and I love it, and that's what I've done most of my career. And uh, everybody told me, oh, we've done it, and it was good, and, but, then the, but then it's dwindled. And, and I said, well, you guys, i got to try. And, uh, and I acknowledge that you're probably right. And um, we had youth basketball here for, I think, three seasons. And uh, we had as many as 100 kids in youth basketball over at the high school gym. So it's, it can be done. Uh, there were more kids, too, at that time. But um, I hope they're successful and we're going to, the park district here, will do everything we can to assist. So uh, kudos to them. Uh, we're already planning for our 10th uh, annual. It's not really the 10th annual because we didn't do it one year. But the 10th annual um, Red, White, and Boom event in the park next July. Or actually, this year was June 30th, but um, uh, next year probably would be July, July 1st. And so um, we're going to start sending out uh, letters to prospective supporters in the, in the uh, community. Um, we are absolutely okay with the day that uh, the community says that uh, by virtue of their um, ability to give or not, uh, that we're, we just can't fund this anymore. That's okay. Um, I'd, I'd hate to see this thing go away because of the, just how neat of a, a night it is. Um, you know, we start about 4.30 in the afternoon with children's games and bounce house and food vendors and picnicking in the park and it turns into the concert that we have every year and then the, and then the fireworks. And it, to me, I've been 34 years in the county and the Lucerne Valley uh, fireworks evening is the, my most enjoyable night of the year in terms of being proud of something that we have a part of putting on and that so many people appreciate. So, um, yeah, you know, that we really don't know how many people are, are in the park. I tried to count one year, but it's almost impossible. I just tried to go, well, that's 100, and that's 100, and that's 100. And, you know, we, we think we have over 3,000 people in and around the park. So. Um, it's a really, really neat time, and I want to say um, we, I, we have never, ever, ever had a, a major problem with 3,000 people in the park. The worst thing we've ever had is, you know, people smoking dope, and and then even they were respectful usually and go and quit. I only had one guy one year tell me that. Well, I won't say what he said to me, but then then I just went over to the police. But thanks to our police and fire folks that are here and always assist us too. Um, I went over to him and said, you know, you, you can't do that here. And he said, whatever he said. And I said, really? And I went and got the sheriff's deputy and he came over and said, I can drag you out of here or you can quit. And he told that guy the same thing he told me. And then he got dragged out of here. So that's the only thing that's ever happened. And uh, uh, we've had zero instances of issues. And so it's something I, I hope we can continue. Um, administratively, um, Steve Samaras is the uh, head of the Water and Sanitation Division for Special Districts, and I, um, I got a phone call from a local community member, uh, a Lucerne Valley resident, who I, I, don't know, I don't think he would care if I mentioned his name, but I didn't ask him, so I won't say his name. But um, he said he had a water filtration system he wanted to show us, so me and Steve went to his house and looked at it, and it was quite promising. Um, just kind of a neat little anecdote that um, uh, we might be able to partner with somebody here locally to provide some um, water uh, filtration cleaning uh, issues that exist all over the county. And uh, if this thing pans out, it'll be a neat story and a, a good solve for, for uh, the county or maybe beyond. 
So I'll, I'll keep you updated on that. Um, we had a, a water meter recently installed about two months ago at CAL FIRE. And uh, CAL FIRE now has their own water meter and pays their own water bill. Uh, I, I love CAL FIRE and County FIRE, and the Police Department, Sheriff's Department. Um, and we're not mad at CAL FIRE, but it's good that they're paying their own water bill because um, uh, CC29 used to pay it. And um, as you know, we're not swimming in money. So every little bit helps. And so that's a positive thing we've done to uh, increase tax revenue staying in the park system. And um, uh, our solar project uh, continues. We have one person, as I've told you, every meeting for the last year that's in, that can pen pencil this out and make it work. Uh, they're uh, doing the numbers to make it uh, where we're getting parking lot solar, as I mentioned last uh, meeting. Um, I planned on coming in January and, and doing a presentation update on the Big Bear Alpine Zoo move relocation. Uh, since there probably won't be a January meeting, I'll, I'll stay in touch with Roger and maybe I can do it at the first meeting uh, when, when you're reconvened. Uh, I hope that you, that you are interested in continuing to serve the community because you all do a wonderful job. Um, solar project, as soon as we reconvene, I'll, I'll try to have them come out and do another presentation on the, mm -hmm. on what the solar project looks like with, with, roof, with uh, not rooftop, with the uh, parking lot uh, contingent. Mm -hmm. And um, that concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the audience may have or the MAC members may have. Okay. On the Halloween, it was very good. I went out there share for a little bit. The only problem we have is I had to cross that street and I had a car flying across there. Okay, I almost got hit. I wasn't happy to, to have to have to go through that. We need somebody to slow it down about before the fire department. Right there on that street, whatever it is. Slow them down because it was lucky that little kid and I didn't get hit. But that was one of my big things that I was worried about. You know, somebody's going to get hit there. Next time you guys have that, maybe have COPs or the Sheriff's Department, whatever. I had to have the our department captain walk me across because I was in no shape to walk after that. That was a long walk for me the way that I did. But the thing was, um, I didn't want to have to get hit a second time. I didn't get hit. Like I said, my foot was out there in the whip by dying. So okay. maybe you want to think. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, and, and uh, I'm glad you said that because the involvement that the CC29 has had with the, the Halloween festivities uh, has been limited in the past to just having the haunted house in here. And uh, we discontinued that about three or four years ago. So, uh, but the right folks heard that from you, and, and I'm sure they'll address that with you. So. Um, sorry, Robin, that was put on by the Roadrunners, not CSA 29, the tailgate. The Roadrunners put on tailgate, not CSA. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But that's a good suggestion that they ha maybe have someone out there for people oh. crossing over Highway 18. It, it wasn't Reese doing yeah. it that night. Mm -hmm. It is scary crossing that street. They do fly down there, and especially on Halloween night. Yeah. Yeah. But we will take that into consideration. I think that's a good point, and I, and I, yeah. and I commend the road owners for their amazing work they do on every avenue. But Thank you. The Halloween thing is incredible. Way to go. I will say that when we do the Halloween event, good Lord, when we do the 4th of July event, um, we, one of the costs that we bear is having uh, paid sheriffs here and, uh, and the fire department and uh, CHP. Now, it's, it's a huge event that we raised you know, $14,000 on, but um, it, it's, it's quite expensive to have CHP come down here, which would work, by the way, for what you're talking about, to have CHP come down here and, and traffic control the, the intersection. So it would be hard for them, the Roadrunners, to do that because I think it costs us $1,400 just for that. But I, I'm sure there's something that can be done to at least improve it. So thank you. Okay. 
All right, thanks, Reese. Thank you. Have a good day. I have to. I got to move over, head out to El Mirage for their MAC meeting, and I, I, I ask that you'll forgive me for running out of here. Thank you. You've got an hour and four minutes, so pick, pick up the pace. <laughs> okay, land use committee has nothing. Uh, cemetery committee, no. nothing. Okay, the correspondence. So all the MAC members received this uh, high desert report. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen one or not. They, uh, Joe Brady uh, publishes them. I used to get when I worked for Victorville City. I get one every month. It's it's a pretty good overview of the economy of the high desert. So if someone would like this copy, I, I thumb through it already. It, it's a uh, they're uh, welcome to it. And we don't have any uh, non-action items. Uh, we have one action item. Um, that was uh, a vote to endorse La Vida comments on the countywide plan. Um, so, the board have any discussion on that? No, I make a motion that we do endorse those comments. Okay. And motion been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion from the audience about it? What we're talking about, I'm sorry there's no copies for you to see it, but... Uh, you know, the county is working on a new updated community plan for Lucerne Valley and all the other communities in the un un unincorporated uh, part of San Bernardino County. And to get to the nutshell is we just want them to doctor up 2007s because that was perfect. Um, the only thing that was missing was the solar because that wasn't on the horizon at that time. So um, there's no comment, so I'll go ahead and bring it to We, <laughs> it takes two tries. Uh, we sent in a uh, comment from the Homestead Valley for the Homestead Valley uh, Community Plan, and the response from uh, Karen Watkins at Land Use Services was thank you for sending it in, and our consultants and Land Use Services will review it and make changes to the countywide plan where we th think it's appropriate. So how do we know what's appropriate? Is there anything else? Okay, let's bring it to a vote then. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, the motion's carried unanimously. Um, so does any council members have any requests or reports? No. Uh, did you send in your uh, comment on Ord Mountain Solar yet? Say again? Ord Mountain Solar. The deadline for comment is tomorrow. Oh. Um, They're working on it. It should be about there. Yeah. Well, I recycled all the other comments that I'd made already. <laughs> I just, yeah. You know, and mostly focusing on what it would do to Scenic 247. I left all the other, all the other disasters they're going to create. I, I left that alone. Okay, um, the next meeting, that'll be, be de to be determined uh, whether we'll be on the board or not. We have no idea. So I want to thank everyone in the audience for those of people that come regularly. Uh, it means a lot to us, and we just thank you very much. Thank so, you. Thank oh. you guys. Well, thank you guys. With that, the meeting is adjourned.